I've asked many people, hey, many people, you know, I've asked them, hey, uh, what you think about this random products, such as a game, a celebrity, you know, a, a genre of music, and they'll be like, oh, oh, this is great, this is the best thing I've ever experienced in my entire life, if everyone could experience this at the cost of me going bankrupt for the rest of my life, I would take that deal with no regrets, now, now that being said, I absolutely despise this product, but because the community surrounding it is the most degenerate scum bastards that are still stuck on the second stage of evolution. Now, as funny as that sounds, I think we can all relate to it, you know? It's not always the, the product or content itself that repels people from it, but sometimes just the community. And, and I think, I even think that most of the time, it's not even the community as a whole. I'd say like seven to, seven to eight times out of ten. It's just a, a vocal minority within a community barking as loud as they can to make their pathetic personalities and obtuse opinions carry more weight. You was floating around like a little bitch and still barely one. Nigga, get the fuck out of my lobby. Despite knowing all this, despite having that logic embedded in my brain, there's still some vocal minorities within big communities that prevent even me from enjoying stuff to the fullest such as uh, Ariana Grande k-pop as an entire genre and then there's this YouTube channel called the dodo F forget these two for now k-pop especially k-pop it's like I'm on the internet I'm reading a, a web page about the the behavior of ducks or something Google's like hey I, I see I, I see that there's a letter K on your page that means you like k-pop right Hey, this guy likes K-pop. I'll just let my buddy Twitter over here know the next time you log in, you want to be bombarded with K-pop trending content and all their amazing and free-thinking fans, right? Stan Luna. 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 It's times like these where I wish that Google had some sort of web extension that made it so that whenever someone said something cringy online, it popped up their exact location or home address right beside their comment. So, you know, you can go to their house and then beat the shit out of them. Now, for Ariana Grande, I feel like it'd be much more effective to give a good description of the fans than to give my own personal experience of them. Ariana Grande fans are the types of people where... Uh, uh, okay, you ever seen an argument happen on the internet? I I'm, I'm gonna try something else. You ever seen an argument happen on the internet, right? And one guy, he's just completely decimating the other person. But the other person, he's too stupid to realize that he's already lost like 11 minutes ago? Yeah, that's an Ariana Grande fan. <laughs> Like, you'll be spectating an argument, right? And the smart guy will be like, hey guys, there are seven continents. I'm so happy that everyone agrees that there are seven continents. And then some other person, uh, I don't know, we'll call them AG for short. AG will be like, actually, there, there are 50 continents. That's why there are 50 stars on the flag. And, and the smart guy will be like, no, you're fucking retarded. The, the, the 50 stars stand for the 50 states in America. And, and even though everyone is joining in on this discussion, telling AG that she's wrong, linking all these sites and facts to her, sh she'll come back like a few minutes later saying, uh, if you paid attention in third grade, you should know that this is basic knowledge, but that's none of my business. And, and then they post like a, a gif of some black woman taking a sip of tea or something like that. Yeah. That's an Ariana Grande fan. Now the Dodo, I'm not sure if the majority of you guys have heard about this channel. You know, you may have seen like a video from them uh, sh shared by your your best friend's mom or something like that. Uh, but, but the Dodo is a YouTube channel whose videos usually consist of uh, heartwarming animal moments, you know? Animals interacting with uh, humans in strange ways. But oftentimes, it's usually like a, a video of some animal being rescued, which, you know, d don't get me wrong, I think it's like one of the coolest things ever, and I recommend the channel for anyone who's having a bad day and wants to put a smile on their face. Now, gotta swallow that spit, what I don't recommend, what I don't ever recommend, is taking a scroll down to the comment section. My God, my goodness, on some of these videos, the comment section is like an Olympic competition, a damn free-for-all for people to show how good of a person that they are. 
wow, this is so me. I remember the day I rescued all 12 of my dogs and adopted all of them. Yeah, yeah, I remember the, the first one. He, he was walking with this one guy, right? He, he had this, this rope-like device around his neck. I think they call them leashes. So I walked up to the dog, and, and I had to do it. I just had to do it. I started sucking that dog's dick. The person that had the rope thing around his neck, he was so shocked, he abandoned his dog, and I had to adopt it. And then all the replies, you're like, you're such a brave person. I suck my dog's dick too. I suck and I swallow. You guys are all brave, great people, but I suck my dog's dick, or my mom sucks my dick, or my dad sucks my mom's dick. So technically, I'm better than all of you. <sighs> you know what? I know a little somebody that can explain this w way better than I can. Have you ever hated something because fans liked it? You shouldn't do that, right? But sometimes there's an inherent bias that comes with the territory. You see a product or an IP that you may know nothing about, but then you hear stories and see the collective mass of people this sort of IP attracts. And you can't help but just think to yourself, what the fuck? I don't like or watch Steven Universe because that's a show for babies. But then I hear that a bunch of people started threatening the life of a 15 year old girl for drawing a character wrongly proportioned. And I can't help but think to myself, what the fuck? Now, that's an extreme example, honestly, but there are many subtle comparisons one can make to this to other overzealous fandoms. There is not exclusivity to fandoms where an audience not only thinks they have power, but does have the power to alter an enforcing viewpoint, to gain control of love of a subject, and monopolize it, take it, and warp it into something twisted or warped. That's what bronies are. Another community that's just really fucked. Imagine being a parent and taking your daughter to one of those conventions where everyone's a My Little Pony fan. And while you're there, in the audience, to one of the panels, some 20 to 30 year old grown ass man who came all by himself gets the mic and starts talking about Alright, so I'm pretty sure you're aware of Princess Celestia being portrayed as a tyrant and near natural and God forbid a molester. What do you fucking think? Do you want your daughter being within this kind of community? Within this kind of environment of adult men who aren't afraid to be as horny or as autistic as they desire? But let's take a step back actually, and look at cons as a whole. You can actually specifically look at nerd cons, anime cons, fighting game events, Star Wars, cosplay, Power Rangers, Jurassic Park, whatever. And you can take a look at this point of view from the people who wear their funny cosplay outfits. Specifically for the most part women, because honestly, it mostly is women who get touched or whatever the fuck else, groped by odd ass horny men who think they can finally touch their 2D waifus for real. If you were being groped by some guy who hasn't showered for three days, you'd feel less inclined to do your hobby so much anymore. Heck, you could also look at the opposite end of the spectrum. Look at cosplaying con events where women frequent more too. While you're a man, dressed as a twink boy, getting some hands touching your knob. And although you in particular may find yourself, uh, panting a little bit, others may not feel comfortable in experiencing such provocative touches to the groin. Especially when you're not doing it for attention, you're doing it for a hobby, you're doing it for fun, for something you like to do. And when you encounter an event for which you're not comfortable with, you remember that, and your mind don't ever let go. To express yourself in your hobby or craft, people always react strongly to the experiences they witness. No one ever just takes it and ignores it. No, a consciousness is eternally formed based on every experience you encounter. And if an experience you encountered within a subject you like was that of a negative one, no matter how much you love that subject, you will feel the slightest bit of resentment towards that topic as a whole forever onwards. And you can take a step back even further. I don't know if everyone will be able to relate to this, but for all of you out there who can, think of a particular subject you liked very much in school. 
I used to love human science, specifically health and biology. But then during high school, two years in a row, for both my health class and my biology class, I had the most shitty and degrading teachers that I have ever had. And by the end of those classes, I didn't like biology and human science as much anymore, to the degree I once did. You can interpret that as a community bias as well. When you want to be a part of something, when you want to do something, learn about something, it's always going to be a battle of your experiences versus those in the same field, whom you may inexplicitly and unavoidably find yourself in contact with. And you may find yourself at a crossroads, a disadvantage of mental comfortability that may interfere and reflect to you a negative side of this community, which will ultimately interfere and reflect the nuanced opinions you may now, in the future, accumulate. Likewise, your experiences, your interactions with communities you are fond of, may also be positive ones. You may come around to love something even more. Maybe your art is getting a bunch of love, or your writings and vids are getting a lot of positive reception. There's a flip side to everything. I used to hate writing, but then I had some good teachers, and now my opinions changed. Now I love writing. It's the only thing I'm good at. And they used to hate sword art online, but now I love it. Cause it's so fucking stupid. And they also used to hate League. And they still do. It's all about the environment. It's about the people around you, within a community for which you have interest in. If interaction is positive, then that's great! That's amazing! But there are times where a community can be something which is dominantly compiled of people who make you feel uncomfortable. A force of nature you need to embrace if you truly want to fit in. Likewise, if you want to talk about or make art of your favorite TV show, but the dominant force within that fandom show is composed of people who disagree with you to the extent that they would attort to harassment, then you wouldn't want to engage in that crowd. And as a result, your voice, and any voice similar to yours, gets lower and lower. So low that your voice may become impossible to hear for anyone else within that community. Sometimes these alternating voices may find a place, and community civil wars may erupt. But other times, that voice faints into a whisper, and nothing more of a mind from one voice of mouth is said. This is how fanned hive minds are formed. This is why attendance or participation for particular events like cons may stagnate or decrease. Companies may notice that, and as a result, reinforce rules to decrease destructive behavior. This is why cons with frequent cosplay now have rules against touching and consent. This is why some shows with particularly strange audiences may lash out against their very fans. This is why some measures, some, are being taken. But unfortunately, that's not the case for every community. Not every business needs not to reap profit. Not every business even is for profit. And so they may see such behavior, they may know of it, and they may be powerless to do anything about it, or don't want to do nothing about it. It's always going to be something that's just going to be out there. Stupid people doing dumbass shit within a community, as a community, so in a way to protect that community, eventually growing an identity of its own that rampant enough to separate itself from what the community was supposed to be about in the first place. And there's nothing you can really do about it except, you know, like, I don't know. Try and make as much of your own noise as possible. Form your friends and get your friends into your hobbies and form your own hive minds from there. Who knows? Who does not anything? Just get off the internet if you don't like it. And that's my rant about communities. Oh, what? One more thing, though. If there's one community in particular I despise the most, I specifically hate the JoJo fandom. And when I say I hate the fandom, I mean I specifically hate 50% of the fandom, not the people who make something from it, like fan art or videos or funny jokes or whatever, but the people who laugh at these jokes, I despise. The people who upvote and retweet and share on social media, specifically, specifically, the people who like and share all those shitty little memes, not because they're funny, not because they actually enjoyed them, but because they were JoJo. They were Jojo, and I know what that is. So I laughed, and I clicked on the up button because that's the thing I know about, and no other reason but that. 
I hate these despicable people who barge into random discussions and try to compare with the slightest shred of relevancy an interesting topic with JoJo. It makes me fucking sick. I can't go into the comment section of a fucking Queen song and not see this fucking shit on a fucking time. Hey everyone, this video is sponsored by absolutely nobody. That's right, and YouTube will probably demonetize it anyways. So yeah, buy my merchandise. Also, if you got this far into the video, please discuss this image in the comments below. Have a great day. She jealous of what? I'm letting up. I'm like the Alice that fell in a cup. I fell in a hole. She was a hoe. She broke her lips, so she ready to Where's blow. Alice? Where's that rabbit at? This is my habitat. Hold my eyes ready for the cataract. I lay on a sink like a wash rag. Hop up in this hog smash. Say, man, with a small lad, you can't less about his dog tags. He called once, did you call back? It was I take the dirt from the underground. Tell your new nigga don't come around.